All right, so if there's one thing many seem to agree on, it's that electric vehicles are better for the planet, and in Utah's case, better for our air. Why then are electric buses not on the fast track in public transit? Or are they? That's the question we'll clear up in this segment of Exhausted. Seven o'clock at night, UTA maintenance crews get to work. Out in the yard, a flashing blue light means a million dollar bus is charging. Electric buses are still an emerging technology, and they're emerging on the streets of Salt Lake City, Ogden, and Tooele. The chief advantage for the state of Utah is we don't have pollution in our air shed uh, from the electric buses. Hal Johnson is UTA's director of innovative mobility. He's the transit tech guru. And in this bus, we've got um, two battery packs and our battery control systems in place of where you typically see a diesel engine. To the U.S. Department of Transportation, one, just one, zero emission bus can eliminate nearly 1,700 tons of carbon dioxide over its 12 year lifespan. Probably the equivalent of taking many, many cars off the road. So eventually they're all going to come here yeah. and get a quick charge. They're going to get, get a quick charge throughout the day. How many zero emission buses are on Utah's roads? We asked the man in charge. Approximately 33. 33 uh, buses. Uh, That's 8% of UTA's total fleet. And those green buses have a price tag, hundreds of thousands of dollars more than the old standard. This bus costs under a million dollars per vehicle. Diesel buses are about $650,000. Jay Fox says the transition to electric is deliberately measured. There's an intentionality to do that. You know, as you see out here, we have three chargers. You know, building out a network that can support the electric buses is really important to get to what is known as sort of a, a zero emission plan as a whole. Why is it taking so long to transition over? I, I would respond that the industry is still new. New to the extent that the technology and costs are ever changing. That expense is balanced against the environmental impact. The less emissions in the air, less health issues for people, less money has been spent on that. So that to me is an investment rather than a cost. That zero emissions plan Fox talks about leans heavily into electric buses and clean natural gas years down the road. A future that likely includes the Olympics 10 years from now. So what does your 10-year plan look like? You're going to see a carbon neutral uh, focus for, for the coming Olympics. About 200 of those will be electric. About 10% of the fleet will be CNG and the balance will be diesel. Perhaps 200 electric buses a decade or so from now. Yes, this bus has an air quality monitor on top of it. Today, a few of those electric buses are monitoring our air in real time. We need to have an electric bus, otherwise the emissions from the bus would overpower any signal that we're trying to cover. Researcher Daniel Mendoza with the University of Utah oversees the system. Buses collecting data every few seconds. They've learned how, at times like during wildfires, air pollution is dynamic. For example, the ozone levels, we saw that they were nearly double from one end of the county to another. So these are the kind of differences that really can prompt action. And he wants Utahns to know that there is an inequality in air quality. So the burden of poor air quality is not shared equally. For example, we've measured that on the west side of Salt Lake City, West Valley as well. There's just more air pollution. If and when 200 electric buses are carrying passengers around the state, that data we started the story with tells us a bigger story. 320,000 tons of CO2 would be eliminated from the air you breathe. Particularly in the version days, I feel it in my lungs. Something the UTA bosses can get behind. I have a personal stake in it as well. I want to breathe well. I'm sure all of our customers want to and all the residents here in the Wasatch Front want to. That is true. Yes, we do. Of course, more people using mass transit and leaving their cars at home. That is what would make the biggest short-term impact on our air quality. And some good news along those lines. According to UTA, ridership is now somewhere between 75 and 80% of pre-pandemic levels and growing.